I tweeted literally just before we got started the cynicism safety blanket. Cynicism is a guarded response. You're setting yourself up against disappointment. Its role within the system is to protect you against experiencing anything bad. It is a preemptive strike against a perceived threat. If I tell myself mm. that all women are bad, then I'm less likely to seek a relationship with women. And as a consequence, I'm never going to feel the pain of rejection. If I tell myself that everything is shit or that things will never get better, then I'm excused of ever having to try anything. It's more comfortable to get fatalistic and call it pragmatism. The cope is framing hope as pathetic and embarrassing and optimism as delusion. It's sour grapes at an existential level. If everything sucks and everyone is horrible and reality is disappointing, and you know that for a fact, it's the people acting like things can be better that are dumb, delusional, and the problem. The upside of never having to feel the pain of failure. That's a very impressive post, Chris. What can I say? Uh, my, point being, <laughs> my point being that I think if someone, we, we have a, a generalized risk aversion at the moment. Young people are getting their driving license later. They're having less casual sex. They're drinking alcohol less. They're taking fewer drugs. They are starting getting jobs later in life. Every, it's slow life strategy. Everything is getting pushed out because people don't deal with risk particularly well. And you know, even if you're a Sigma male Jimmy Mo, it's still the same on your side too, that you're prepared to do hard things, but only within the bounds of what you consider to be acceptably hard. And yeah, this adversarial relationship or nature that's being sort of posited as men and women are each other's enemies, something that I've noticed. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing goes for, I guess, people just being concerned about, okay, what, what does the future hold? I will take yeah. all of my cues about this from the internet. Yeah, exactly that. What happens is, especially when we have low self-esteem, um, when we've got low self-esteem, the ego has to find ways to defend itself. We need to defend our ego because we don't have pure self-love and self-esteem. And the quickest and easiest way to defend your ego is by rejecting what may reject you. If I quickly say, oh, who wants abs? I don't have to go to the gym. If I quickly say, oh, God, men are trash. I don't have to work on myself to sustain a positive relationship. If I quickly reject what I believe will reject me, I then defend myself against the possibility of any kind of new trauma. So it's usually a trauma response, but really it's stemming from low self-esteem. And I, I, that's what it screams to me when I see these people who are trying to divide men and women and almost take pleasure out of insulting the opposite gender. I, I, I just never understood it. Shared hatreds are much more cohesive than shared loves. And mm. getting people to bind together over the mutual distaste of an outgroup is significantly yeah. easier than the mutual love of an in-group, which is why there are yeah. incentives online for creators to do this. Mm, exactly that. Because here's the thing, not every creator is trying to change your life for the better. Most creators are trying to sell you something, they're trying to get popularity, they're designed to polarize, they're designed to kind of make it online. And, uh, you know, and anybody could say the same for me, they're saying like, oh, you're trying to, you know, blow up and all this stuff, which I, 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 I hope people know that's not really the intention. But the reality is most creators are creating they're not actually healing and the problem is they appeal to the young market because there's a gap the older psychologists who understand all the academic references and all of those things they don't understand the young market of dating and because of that huge gap the young people are thinking i don't need to go to an expert i'll just go to this podcast with that guy and this girl and they will tell me because they get it they don't get it they just get you. They get what you're going through and want to manipulate your vulnerabilities in order for you to become a consumer of this. I've heard you say that current dating is just practicing for divorce. What's that mean? <laughs> it means you're learning the tools and skills required to recover from a breakup rather than how to maintain a marriage. So you are learning how to make somebody jealous, how to move on quickly, how to meet somebody new, how to play hard to get, how to play games, how to essentially ensure your relationship will not make it through the tough times. You're not learning how to sustain and maintain and how to uh, debunk some of the behaviors in yourself that are toxic to the relationship. You're just learning how to uh, categorize every ex of yours as a narcissist, but not about what behaviors or traits in you attract or even are narcissistic. So I think the current dating climate is purely how do I move on? How do I protect myself? How do I not get too attached? Catch flights, not feelings. That culture is what we're being taught. I guess this is similar to what we said before, the risk aversion, the guarded response. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
exactly that that's what it is I, I mean in your opinion have you noticed that as well like from a man's perspective I mean I've noticed it as a woman because I remember trying to share something positive about men um, and I couldn't find a meme online I was looking and scrolling I was trying to find something to show how lovely it is when you're loved by a man and I scrolled for hours and hours and I couldn't find anything but when I try and look for a meme that will say men are this men are that within a second and then that was my wake up moment because I was just like even if I wanted to say something positive about my partner I can't find anything online um, and then I realized that it is a culture of getting you to hate men is it the same in for men do you find that the same kind of culture is being trying to be breeded certainly in terms of men having distaste for women uh, mm. you know, like, don't worry, King, you don't need her. She's just a hoe <laughs> in any case. You know, like Sigma, yeah. Sigma male memes abound. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a lot less positivity from men to men, generally. Right. I think that there are still pro-women women cohorts, yeah. but there are fewer pro-men male cohorts. And, um, you know, that's partly just because of the trend. You know, everyone says, like, women will give their uh, give people compliments and not mean them. Men will take the piss out of each other and not mean it. It's yeah. that kind of balance. But it, it can mean, yeah. you know, think about Jordan Peterson, right? Why he came onto the scene so much. And he, he used to tear up all the time telling the same story, yeah. which was these men have never had a positive word told to them their entire lives. They've never been encouraged. They've never been told that they are worthy of love or mm. acceptance or praise or validity or any of that. Yeah. Why did yeah. that message resonate? Because so many men felt and still do feel like no one sees them, that life can be hard, that they do have yeah. emotions, that they do want to open up, that they do need support, that they do want to be praised in a way and because yeah. there is nothing deeper i think because there is still uh, a challenge in maybe men opening up themselves is the, some of the boundaries of that have been broken but the boundaries of men responding to men that have opened up definitely still exist in a massive massive way so okay what Absolutely. are the ways in which i can get some validation from the world well success money cars education women status prestige dominance yeah. aggression yeah. you know all of these they're like proxies for what a lot of men want and that's not to say i want all of those things as well right but they're proxies for what men miss i think more spiritually and, and existentially yeah, I absolutely agree. I feel like in, in my work, when I've worked with men who have turned to um, prostitution and who have turned to pornography addiction, um, a lot of the time, especially when they turn to prostitution or even just a gold digger, um, they're so hurt when she doesn't like them back. So they're not paying for sex. They're actually paying for intimacy. And I always tell them, you can't buy intimacy. You can't buy it. This girl, you can buy her a bag and you can have sex with her, but you're craving connection. And that is something you can't buy. And the reason they're craving connection is because A, they don't know where to find it. And also they're being told if they do look for connection, they're a simp. That word simp gets thrown around. So we've almost shamed men for wanting and craving connection. And I can say in honesty, the men that cheat, the men that turn to pornography, the men that turn to escorts, I'm very non-judgmental because I understand behind every self-sabotaging behavior there is a need that has not been met for a really long time and for that need to be met they turn to self-destructive behavior as a coping mechanism so um, I definitely think that we've got a crisis of men cr seeking intimacy but believing that it's wrong and the culture and the internet is also teaching them that it's wrong so they're secretly craving it and then f secretly finding uh, outsourcing it in the wrong ways